Hi there, guys. I'm Chris Bowden. And I'm Paul Kidwell. Welcome to The Geek Group, where today we are doing... This is, this is in our SSTC series, but this is kind of an optional step. It's an option. It's an okay. input portion of it. Okay. Um, solid state coils, the tank circuit runs on DC voltage. The stuff you get out of the wall is AC, so you got to convert it some way or another. Some people will just put a single diode in series, so you get a half wave rectification. Some will do a full wave. While you're at it, you can put a voltage multiplier in there. It'll give you your DC voltage, and you can get something more than the 120 volts coming out of the wall. Which is way. why we have a nifty multiplier in front of us with yes. giant capacitors. Yes, we're going with, there were some <laughs> spare thumper caps laying around, so I thought, hey, let's it's do it. It's a little it. bit overkill. It's a lot of overkill, but, well, I mean, It's bigger than the whole mini coil. I was, they were available. Okay. And I did it for the sake of doing it. So what's a voltage multiplier, Paul? All right. Um, when we're doing things where we want to power them with DC, we have the option of using a capacitor diode array to getting a higher voltage out than what we're putting in. And we do this all the time. This we is, do we've it done on this with thumper, thumper stomper, stomper, kicker, tosser. Yeah, this is, this is a, a major thing for us. We do yes. these a lot. Um, we do them with uh, microwave oven transformers and the caps and diodes out of microwave ovens. Um, I'm more interested in the diodes and caps I get out of microwaves than the transformers nowadays because yeah. I use those. Yet you need twice. You need two microwave ovens to get enough diodes and caps to make one doubler. Okay. So, anyhow, um, I have some circuits here, and I'm, I imagine we could put them up on the whiteboard. We're going sure. to animation this fast in a video. We're going to animation this fast in a video. Off to animation. First thing we start out with is our uh, AC power coming in. Okay. For Stomper and everybody, we have a microwave oven transformer to kick the voltage up to start with. But I'm just going to go off of what's coming in the line. There could be a transformer in here if you wanted a different voltage coming in and out. Okay, but we're going to start with line voltage at 120, 120 volts AC. What we do is we feed that voltage into a capacitor. Now this is just one of the lytics. This is one of the lytics. Okay, well you got to draw it right then. It's a lytic cap. It's polarity, man. You got to have a little curvy line. And I got the diode pointing up on this side. So that's the first part of it. Okay. Uh, the second part is another diode, and we have another cap. And I think our positive is going to be here. Oh, hold on. I just wanted to make you have to do the curvy line so that if we get them wrong, we get like 500 comments. All right, on how I'm not going to do the curvy line. <laughs> when our AC has plus here and minus here, current's going to flow through the diode and charge this cap up. Okay. So it'll charge it up to the peak voltage we're putting in. Okay. So that's 1.4 times the 120 Because we get the volts. RMS and all that. Exactly. So you got about... 160 volts DC because we rectified it with the yep. diode. For the other half here, you don't get any current flow because the diode is going to block it. So okay. during that half of the So cycle, this is the first half of the wave cycle. Right. Okay. We're charging that cap up. Okay. During the second half of the wave. Oh, this is where it gets cool because we get the whole cascade effect. Our current is going to be flowing this way. So we're, we're plus up here and minus down here now. Current is not going to flow through this diode. It's going to flow that way through that diode. You have 120, well, 160 volts peak. There's another 160 volts here already. Mm -hmm. They're in series with each other. So now we're going to go all the way around here. And you wind up with 320 volts on this capacitor. Okay. We tap our power off over here to go to our circuit. Okay. So our load is out there. Okay. Now, there's no resistance in here aside from the ESR of the capacitors themselves. So, so we're getting these... 320 volts DC here. Yes. And how bad is the ripple? Um, it depends entirely on what the resistance of your load is. The lower the resistance of the load, the more current you draw out, the worse the ripple gets. Okay. All right? So that's why the bigger the capacitors you use, the less ripple you're going to get as well. You can draw more out for the load. Okay. Now, for the kids at home, what is ripple? Um, it's a fluctuation in the voltage. 
This here is cycling, it's 60 hertz, so each half wave you get 120 little humps every yes. second. The capacitors tend to filter that out, and if you're not drawing any load, the ripple will all but disappear. You wind up with a nice smooth DC out. Okay. As you draw current out of your output cap there, it'll draw the voltage down a little bit, and then the next hump that comes from your AC input will pop it back up again. And the area in between, this this area here. That's your ripple. That's the load. And the more the more you pull that down, the more pronounced your ripple is going to be. Right. So that's that's where ripple. Comes now is this a doubler or a tripler? That is a doubler. Okay. How do we ripple it? Doubling the peak of what you're putting in AC. Okay. Now, I'm going to move two components here. This portion over here is still the same. Okay. I'm going to take these two and I'm just going to rotate them down. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add another cap and diode. That's why I need microwave ovens when I'm okay. scavenging things. The cap goes up here, and the diode goes on the end, like the other one, and the diode is opposite the last one. You'll notice okay. they reverse as you go. Now we could do this at Astro. Okay, this is called a cascade multiplier, because yes. you can cascade these things on. And, and we could just keep doing this over and over and over again until we hit the electrical limits of the components themselves. Correct. In our circuit, when we had plus down here, this diode allows the current to flow, so that guy charges up to 160 volts just like before. Okay. This 220 volt or 320 volts gets charged the same way during the other half of yeah. the wave. This diode blocks this cap from charging. Okay. This cap gets charged at the same time as that cap. So right? it's the diode. Boom, 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 boom. Right. Like that. So we tap it off at the top now instead of the end. We wind up with negative there and positive there. This is the same thing as what we got on our multiplier here. Okay, so show me on the multiplier. All right, now, here's our power coming in. Okay. All right, so that's this. Um, we have diode stacks all arranged over here. We have caps going out. You'll notice these two caps are in series with each other. You can see the dark yeah. trace. So there's our output. I think our diodes are arranged so pluses at this end. Okay. We got it reversed up yeah. here. But so that cap is in series with that cap. Okay. All right. This cap is the one that's hanging here that gets charged on the off okay. cycle. So. That's my band if, name of the day, by the way. Power me up. Okay. Off cycle capacitor. Off beat cap. All right, we're uh, at zero here. Go ahead and pop me up to something useful. Something useful, like 20 volts or 20%? Okay. Um, what do you want? I'm on AC volts. I'm there and I'm there. Crank me up a little. Okay, we're coming up to 10% of the input power. Oh, so about 12 volts. About 12 volts. Okay, here, you hold that on there. I'll get you exactly 10 volts if I can. Make the math easy. Okay, well, I'm going to have you adjust it because we're going to wind up. So there's 10 volts AC. Yeah. So it's like 1.6, no. I don't know, 1. measure 4, it and you'll get it. 1.4 times that, 1.41 1 times. It's root 2 times your input yeah. gives you your. So let's see. The. Going to DC now, I got 24 there, I got 12 here, and I got 24 here. This is our first cap, which okay. is that one. Okay. This one here is our second cap, which is that one. So we get our RMS, our, our peak voltage calculated from the RMS there. Okay. This one gets double. All right. This one over here and everything else in the cascade from this point out gets double the voltage. Okay. All right. So you get another 24 out here. So this is a tripler. So we tap it across these two caps and you wind up with 36 volts. With only 10 volts in. With 10 volts in. All right, so what's the limit? This is supposedly good to 1,000. So if you crank that up. Okay. 
give so you, us. You measure the input voltage. You ready? Go on up. Okay. Give me full power. I'm getting there, nice and easy. Okay, there's there's your 140 percent, or maybe that's volts. I don't know, but that's 140 on here, and you're reading 135.4. So that's everything the variax got. And there's 556, See, 555 cool. volts DC. That's cool. All right. Now, so whatever your input is, you're getting double here, and you're getting double here. So your 320 plus your 160 gives you your 500 and change. Cool. Now, you hear the term when you're talking about voltage multipliers of Cockroft-Walton. Cockroft-Walton is kind of the same sort of thing. Um, it's a cascade multiplier. Mm -hmm. The arrangement of the circuitry is a little bit different, but basically you're, you're charging up on one cycle and they're arranged in uh, series for where you're tapping the power off. It's the but same sort of But this is principle. not a Cockcroft Walton multiplier? No, it's not. Okay. This is a, the technical term is a cascade voltage multiplier. Okay, and All this right. is a tripler. What we've written off right here is a tripler. To get a quadrupler, You'd, it's, it's you just, just do the same thing and add it on. And so then you just move your tap point your from tap here points move down. out. Nope, nope, here. down here. Oh, down here. Yeah, okay. it flips over to the other side. Okay. And we tap off over here again, down here. And this one would also get charged to 320. So now, 320, 320, 640. Okay. Your odd multiples, you tap off the top. Your even multiples, you tap off the bottom. What makes it an odd multiple is this one cap that's got your peak input okay. voltage on it. That right there is literally what we have here. The only thing I have added to our actual working example is I put some resistors in here. And those are for bleed down? Well, when you turn the power off, hold on, let me. Let me know when you're ready. Get back on here. I'm a little nervous about what I'm touching here because this is like. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. Off. When you turn it off, it starts bleeding the voltage down. And it's not fast. I could have put some lower resistance. Yeah, you, could, you could have done with a lot more resistor on there. Yeah. After a minute or two, it gets down to a safe level. This okay. doesn't bleed off quick. But um, <coughs> they, if you short those caps, that's bumper. I wouldn't I mean, want to do that. No, you, <laughs> you, would, you would blow the end off of your uh, screwdriver. Yeah. So if you want to pull your Leatherman out, or not, no. but anyhow, that's the input stage for a slightly larger Tesla coil that we've been kicking around building here. Okay. Um, this is for Dan's thing? Yeah, it's okay. like, we're going to use, it's like, there's the bridge. For it. That's sexy. IGBT's in there, four of them. Nice large. Where the hell did you get that heat sink? We took apart one of the large 1500 watt power supplies and said, hey, there's a heat sink. Let's use it. Okay. And those are cute little IGBT's. Those are cute big IGBT's actually. I'm not used to seeing them that tiny. Okay, that's a <laughs> that's a 60 and 60 IGBT. Okay. You you can see them down in there. I I know out in the real world those are really, really huge, but I'm used to the ones we have in the high voltage line. Which are like bricks. Yeah, which are like, you right. know, well, it's like, oh, those are cute little things. Our multiplier feeds into two screw terminals on here. It's like here and here is the input. The, uh, there's our gate driver transformer right there. That goes off to the uh, gate, the driver kit that we're producing. Okay. It plugs in right there. And then from this copper trace here and that one, you would tap off to go to your primary cap and primary coil okay. on your Tesla coil. So it's multiplier, bridge, primary and secondary coil, and then this goes off to your driver board, your fiber optic, and your interrupter. So it's like a big T. Excellent. All right. So that's all the basics of voltage multipliers. Yep. They've got mm -hmm. that now. And how it fits into the system. There you go. That's so, the video. That's, that's the whole the thing. It's that easy. See? Yep. We're done. It's not too hard. You can do this. All right. So I'm Chris Bowden. And I'm Paul Kidwell. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in learning more about Tesla coils that you can build at home with our massive open source solid state Tesla coil project, you can learn a lot more at The Geek Group. Dot org. And if you're watching this video, you really probably should be a member. You're, you're one of us. So thank you for watching, and as always, we'll see you next time.
This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.